Hello everybody, my name is Cameron Brown and a warm welcome to the How To Cameron channel. It has been quite a while since I made a video in general and specifically a video on university and today I wanted to rant about something because I feel like these are the type of videos you guys enjoy, uh, videos that will most likely get me in trouble uh, and today I'm going to be talking about lab reports slash labs uh, because obviously taking chemistry degree level a large component of taking that degree is lab work. And I'm not going to lie, <laughs> I think it's the worst part of the goddamn course, in my opinion. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Before this video starts, if you guys do enjoy it and you want to see more videos like this, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new today. Okay, let's start off talking about lab reports. So pretty much, if you don't know what a lab report is, uh, you need help. A lab report is literally just a summary of your experiment. You are writing a summary uh, talking about what you did in the experiment, what you saw or what you measured in the experiment and you go through your results. You interpret your results and you answer a few questions regarding the syllabus, i.e. the syllabus that's specific to the lab report that you're doing. I thought that was all right. You know, when I uh, first learned about what a lab report actually is, I thought to myself, as long as I do the lab correctly, I'm not going to muck up the lab report. Oh my god, was I wrong. So pretty much, I've only had one lab report marked. I am three, four months into my degree, and I've only had one lab report marked, and I got four out of 12, so I did terrible. Uh, now, nothing to worry about. It's not that heavy uh, of a lab report. It's literally the first one. In fact, we had to do a second lab report on a different experiment. We did four experiments so far, four formal experiments anyway. And the first one uh, had a weight of 12 marks, but the second one had a weight of 24 marks. And I feel like I've done much better in the second one. Just to make that clear, I don't feel like I've failed uh, this this sector of courses. Even if I flopped like all my lab reports, it's not a huge factor to my degree, but it is still a factor. Just to put that mark into context, uh, the whole module of inorganic chemistry year one labs, I believe is 100 marks. That one that I got four out of 12 in, I mean, it's out of 100. So it's not really a big deal. And a lot of the marks, I think 30 of them, are from just results. And I know for a fact that my results, uh, what I actually got in the labs, they, they definitely got way more than half marks. Regardless of that, lab reports, why do I not like them? Well, it's not just because I didn't do too well in the first one, uh, because I think with the second one, I've done much, much better, um, to be quite frankly honest. Um, and obviously, I'll see what mark I get, and that will dictate whatever I thought before. So you may be wondering, oh, Cameron, I know why you're complaining about lab reports. You did bad in the first one, and that's why you're angry with them. It's actually not that. So with the first lab report I did, uh, two of the marks <laughs> I completely missed out because I didn't do any of the interpretation questions. Uh, I was a bit confused because for the lab reports i chosen, the first experiment I did, the lab report, the, um, the questions that they give in the lab report, uh, contribute two marks to the full 12 marks. I didn't even know you had that answer. The reason why I didn't think that I had to write them into my lab report, the answers to these questions, was just because the interpretation questions, like the way that you'd answer them, it would seem really ill-fitting in a lab report. Like, I, I did not really understand that in a lab report where you're talking about what you did in your experiment and what results you got, I didn't realise that you meant to also answer some chemistry questions, questions that they, they just, the answers to them just don't fit in. Like if you're giving your results and you're explaining what apparatus you used and what techniques you used and what you measured, to start answering questions on chemistry, like an inorganic syllabus, it just seemed really ill-fitting. For the second lab report I did, uh, originally, for some reason, the interpretation questions account for four marks uh, because the whole experiment, the lab report, you get a mark out of 12, they double it. Effectively, they're worth 8 out of 24 marks. A third, a third of my marks are just coming from answers to some questions, uh, some random chemistry questions. I mean, they're not random, obviously, they're to do with inorganic chemistry, but they're not really that closely related to the report, like the, the experiment I've done. And it's just really confusing because with my second lab report, I've, I've got like my whole lab report, you know, what you'd expect to see. And then at the end, I've just got some random answers, like to some random questions. It just doesn't look like it fits. And 
Obviously, that's why I didn't do too well in the first experiment. I mean, I shortchanged myself two marks without even messing anything up. I literally just didn't bother, I guess. But I just it just looks weird. It looks weird having a lab report and then having two exam answers at the end. It just looks really bad, to be honest. But I guess that's how you write lab reports. I'm not convinced, to be honest. The second thing I don't like about lab reports, and this is a huge one. In the mark scheme, uh, I say mark scheme, in the mark guidance, uh, you get four marks for the method. Now, obviously, because my second experiment is doubled in terms of weight, uh, you know, I get eight marks in total for the method. Uh, but one mark, which is actually two marks because of the weight difference, as I mentioned before, uh, two marks comes from the experiment details, the method being concise, concise, short. Being concise, okay, whatever, that, that's a given. You don't want the lab report being 14 pages long and you don't want to be explaining in your method, oh, make sure you breathe four times every 20 seconds, i.e. once every five seconds, don't want to be oxygen deprived, like, you don't want, you don't want that to occur, because it looks really, really bad in your lab report. But a part of it being concise, which I didn't know for the first lab report as well. May I just mention, I didn't do bad in the first lab report because I tried and I knew what I was doing. I literally had no clue what I was doing. I completely winged it. To get these two marks, uh, because of the double weighting uh, through the method, you can't, well, it says don't mention standard laboratory equipment. So, for example, beaker or conical flask or test tube, you can't mention them. Which, I mean, I kind of get until you have a hot plate involved. So if you don't know what a hot plate is, it's literally a plate that's hot. Wow, fantastic explanation from Hannah Cameron, I know. In the second experiment, I measured these masses. And then after I measured these masses, like, it's really awkward because you say what you measured and then you have to like say, I put them together. But I, I, I don't know if to say I put them together in a beaker because that makes perfect sense. I don't get why you'd be penalized for writing that. You put the masses together in a beaker. Like what else am I meant to say without mentioning the standard laboratory equipment? Uh, you put them all together. Like that's literally what I wrote. It just, it just sounded really bad, but I guess that's what they want. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I read a lab report, um, example. It, it, it was written really badly. I don't know how it was given full marks. It was literally the same thing as I mentioned before. It was like, measure all the masses put together. What do you mean put together? Put together where? In my sock? No. Like, what does that mean? Okay, it's, it's just really annoying. But furthermore, the issue that I had, okay, that, that's minor. I guess you could put it together. I mean, it's kind of obvious to put it in a flask. I don't know. But yeah, and then after that, you have to put that on a hot plate for it to react. Obviously, there's a volume in there. There's a liquid in there. That makes sense. That's why you put it on a hot plate. But how do you mention put it on hot plate? Because in my eyes, I would mention beaker, glass beaker, because it conducts heat efficiently. If I don't mention beaker, you could use a test tube and it wouldn't work. So it's just really confusing. It's really confusing because I'm here thinking to myself, okay, put it on hot plate. Put what on hot plate? It doesn't make sense. Okay, I don't know if this video is making any sense. I'm probably speaking complete gibberish. Okay, I'm really angry about this, as you guys can clearly tell. But I, it just makes no sense because I've got these, I've got these weighed out masses. I've got this uh, volume of a liquid. I've put it together in in a unknown uh, device because I can't specify it without lo losing the two marks for being concise. And then I've put like, how do you say put it on hot plate? Because if you just say put it on hot plate. You could literally put the stuff you've weighed and measured, you could just put it on the hot plate instead of putting it in a beaker because you're not specifying anything different. It just annoys me so much. It annoys me so much how you're literally penalized, you're effectively penalized, well, that's how it seems, for mentioning what to put it in. How does that make sense? Ugh, so annoying. I, I written uh, this lab report. I written it in immense detail. I, m I mentioned like what conical flask I use. So for example, oh, use a 200 milliliter conical flask. I don't remember what I said actually. Well, you literally get penalized for that apparently. You get penalized for being specific. Like how does that make any sense? Another thing with lab reports I don't like is the flipping markers. They're just pricks. Okay, I'm sorry. This really is gonna, me, gonna get me in a lot of trouble I know. Right, okay, you get two marks for the chemical equation of the experiment. But I worked it out. I worked it out perfectly, but I didn't put the numbers in subscript. I don't know why I didn't, but I mean, it was pretty obvious. Like it was pretty obvious that, I mean, 
it was meant to be subscript. But I lost the marks, the two marks, just because I didn't put a few numbers in subscript. That just seems a bit harsh, my first lab report. But I just, I don't know. Like, I know, I know specifically, this is on the computer, by the way. It's not obviously through writing. If it was, I get it. But, like, I feel like they're being a bit harsh there. And more specifically, when it comes to the chemical equations, it's really hard to work them out. Because it seems like every single lab I've had, the reactions are so obscure. I've never seen them before. I, I don't even know anything about the specific reaction. And there was one I did a ligand substitution. If you know what ligand substitution is, it's way too complicated to understand. It's way too complicated to explain briefly. You know, when you do ligand substitution, you have lots of... Um, you have lots of atoms or ions, whatever you want to call them, which kind of like move around. They don't really affect your product. Like they kind of just, they're not spectator ions because they do react, but they, they kind of just don't really touch your product nor reactant. Uh, and because of that, I mean, they do. It's really confusing because I don't know if to incorporate them or not. Like with ligand substitution, you can have really basic reactions because you can just ignore the other ions that your reactants with, for example, the, the one that is not undergoing the substitution. But I don't know if to, you know, to give the complicated reaction or the more simplified reaction. I don't know if this makes any sense. If you're doing chemistry, you'll know what I mean. If you're not, you'll be like, what the hell? Probably, I don't know. But it's just really annoying because I don't know what chemical reaction they actually want because there's more than one that's accurate. And the weird thing is, the first reaction that I came up with, I knew was correct, but I didn't know if it was good enough like for the practical like i don't know if it was good enough for the mark i wouldn't think it was to be quite frankly honest but then i came up with a new reaction which it was a good reaction everything made sense it was all balanced everything was great about it but there was a small chance it was slightly wrong because i don't know what's reacting i mean if we're adding nine million different chemicals in one i don't know what's reacting with what i don't know if something's there to improve the rate of reaction or if it's actually reacting properly to be quite frankly honest so there's a small chance i got the complete equation wrong which is bad because if you get the equation wrong you can't work out the percentage yield which is which then again is worth some marks i think it's worth two marks but overall, it's just really confusing. I don't know if this video is making any sense, but it, it's just, it just sucks, to be quite frank with because there's two reactions I could have written down. One of them is the basic one. I know it's right, but I don't know if it's good enough for the lab report. I don't know if it's specific enough for the lab report, because it's ignoring quite a few of the atoms and quite a few of the compounds and reactants. But then there's another chemical equation that I could put in, which I actually did put in at the end of the day, which looks great. It's all balanced. It all makes sense. But there's a small chance it's wrong because I've never seen it before and I couldn't find it on the flipping internet. And the last thing is, I worked out a percentage yield and it was over 100%. So... Let me put you guys in my shoes. I spend two hours uh, working out an equation. In the two hours, I'm also uh, working out the percentage yield and I come out with 100, upwards of 100%. Imagine my happiness at that point. I was literally just thinking to myself, just flipping kill me. Oh my God. But the thing is with labs, I, I'm going to be honest, I really don't like the labs in chemistry. They're really long. I don't know why. I don't know what happened from A level to degree level. But how come with A levels, they take 30, 40 minutes. But with degree, they take four hours. How does that make sense? Like, I'm not even doing anything that dramatically different, it feels like. I'm literally doing, doing the same type of reactions, like ligand substitution. I've literally done that during my A levels. It took 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But when I do it at a degree level, oh no, it takes two hours, three hours. What the fuck? It's dark outside when I leave. It's, it's depressing as hell. It's just, it makes no sense. It's making me really angry actually thinking about it. But hey, that that's it for today's video. I don't know how it turned out. Uh, be sure to leave me a like if you did enjoy it. Obviously, if it didn't make too much sense, uh, sorry. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new today. And I'll be seeing you guys later. Goodbye.